Hello and welcome to Mini Lotter. Today I'm painting a warrior of Minas Tirith. I'm gonna show you how I paint it as a normal warrior, but also how I add a little bit of detail to make it an Osgiliath veteran. You can also add some green stuff like I did with this model to make him stand out a little bit more. Today I began with priming everything chaos black and painting the base. I painted the base Morfang brown, a heavy dry brush of it. After which I did a light dry brush of XV88, just to give it a little bit more detail. After that is done, we start with the warrior. And we're gonna start with the most obvious part of this model and we're gonna start with lead belcher. And I use lead belcher and not something more shiny because, and this is gonna be a little tangent. The warriors of Minas Tirith in the movies have a very dull armor. Games Workshop likes to paint them with a surprisingly bright armor, like way too bright in my opinion. So I like to be more movie accurate and not follow Games Workshop. So yeah, I really don't like what Games Workshop does with the metal. I really like lead belcher and a buttload of null oil. So yeah, we're gonna do the armored parts, his legs, his torso, his shoulders, his arms. Everywhere there should be metal, you paint lead belcher. And we're not gonna highlight it like Games Workshop because it's gonna make it way too shiny. I really don't like shiny UE uh, Warriors of Condor. And no offense if you do this, it's just not me. It's a pet peeve of mine, I really don't like it for some reason. <laughs> yeah. And after we've done a nice job of painting it evenly on the warrior, we're gonna start painting his face with the finest brush you have. My finest brush is extremely fine. I bought it like 15 years ago and it's still going strong. And we're gonna paint Flate 1 Flash onto his face. Try not to touch the metal. If you do, you can always fix it later with some lead voucher. After you've done a good job at painting his face with a nice and even coat, or close to a nice and even coat, you're gonna paint his tunic ashen grey. It's a nice dark grey, once again if you want to be movie accurate, I believe it's black, their tunic. But that would be a very boring model, just silver and black, so we're gonna use ashen grey. Just to give it a little bit more color and paint the tunic, you can see in the video where I paint the tunic. Don't forget on his arms to paint the tunic as well. After which we're gonna use Doombull Brown for his quiver. If your model doesn't have a quiver you can skip this step. And we're just gonna use it on the quiver. And Rhinox Height we're gonna use for the scabbard of the sword. Make it a nice and even coat as well. And for the quiver and the scabbard, we don't paint the bottom parts of it. We're gonna later on give it a nice hashnut copper layer. But before we do that, we're gonna go to Abaddon Black. And every part that uh, should be black, the back of his legs, his gloves on his hands, the shoes as well I paint Abaddon Black, just because it's easier. And if the Murfang Brown or XV88 has tainted his feet, weird thing to say, just go over it with some Abaddon Black. Once that's finished, we're gonna go to Morfang Brown for his bow. If he doesn't have a bow, you don't need to paint a bow. <coughs> Obviously. 
and you're gonna get his belts, his straps for his armor, everything like that we're gonna paint Morfang brown. If you like me have a little pouch extra on the back of uh, the model that I try to make with green stuff. I'm not a professional with green stuff, I'm very new to it. You can use Morphang Brown as well, or Rhinoxide, Doombill Brown, whatever you want. If you want to give him a little bit more uh, stuff going on on his armor. In hopes to make him kind of look like an Osgiliad veteran without much effort. Once you're done with Morphang Brown, we can go to Hushnut Copper. As I said before, we're gonna uh, paint the tips of the scabbard and the quiver, the entire sword handle as well. I'm not bothered with painting it in multiple colors, I'm just gonna go hash nut copper, it's just an easy thing to do. And you're probably gonna have at least 24 to paint probably, so you want to go through it a little bit fast. And for the fletching of the arrows, I'm using corn rat. If you know, you know. <laughs> Just because I like the lore about uh, red arrows sent to Rohan, I like to give them all red arrows, my Gondorians, as a little nod to that. Now the fun begins with the shade paints. The first one is Null Oil, and we're gonna use a lot of it. With a lot, I mean a lot. I want the drenched in null oil. Everything except for the flesh and the browns. If it's not flesh colored or brown colored, you're gonna use null oil, especially on the metal. Make sure it's a thick coat. It's gonna look way better. After that's dried, we're gonna use a Reikland flesh shade on the face and Agrax earth shade on the brown parts brown parts you can highlight with the same color we painted them earlier for a subtle highlight. I personally don't really tend to do that a lot, you can add way more detail than this, but since it's just a standard warrior type I don't like to give it a whole lot of attention, but I like to give it some attention, if you know what I mean. If you're just painting a Minastrit Warrior, you can stop here, put some static grass on it, a grass tuft on it, and you're done. But I want to make him more of a Noskiliad veteran. What I like to do next is get some dark brown pigment. And the dark brown pigment is supplied by my beautiful wife. She bought it as a present for me in a little pigment kit. It was like 13 euros, 12 euros for a pigment kit. It had like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 pigments in it. And dark brown and the rust color are the two I use the most and that alone is worth 13 euros in my opinion because it really does a lot for a model. And with the dark brown pigment we're gonna get it on a brush you don't care a lot about. Or at least that's what I do, I use a special brush for my pigments. And just get some on your brush and try and paint it on the parts you want to get dirty. Like the bottom of his tunic, his shins. Everywhere you think there should be any mud and dirt and everything, you want it there. And don't be cheap with it. Just use as much as you think you need, and maybe a little more. And you can really push on the brush to get it in the crevices, and make it look real good. And that's the last step. After that I just put a little grass tuft or two on it. And now it's ready to go with his brothers on the battlefield. 
hope you all enjoyed this video if you did give a like subscribe leave a comment on what you want to see next if you want to see more minis i've painted you can always go to my instagram channel it will be a pinned comment down below have a good one